All right, let's get talking about the Amityville Asylum. Oh, my thoughts after this film. You know, this is the 11th film in the franchise. I really wasn't expecting all that much, stepping into it anyways. It didn't look like it had that much of a budget. It looked intriguing by the trailer. Um, but aside from that, I'm like, oh, I don't really have any high hopes at all. And what I will say, it is not perfect. It's not even great. But it's a heck of a lot better than the ninth, the, well, the tenth entry in the series. Uh, the one that, ironically, the Asylum did. Uh, yeah, the the haunt the Amityville haunting that one was pretty much atrocious. This one, what was interesting was this one had more of a budget, or at least it appeared like it did. It was smarter than the previous entry, and it had more passion. <sighs> I give it a lot of props for it being much more passionate. People were giving much more to this movie than to other films in the franchise so far. Um, is it better than any in the original series or the remake? No. It is pretty much 10th in the list. It's better than Haunting. That's for sure. I think um, the most surprising thing to me was how much the film respected the actual like legacy of um, the 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 legend surrounding it, surrounding Amityville, and most of the legend is not established in film canon. I've seen that more through documentaries and special features. Not so much film canon, so I give them, I, I really truly give them a lot of props for establishing stuff about they thought the house was built on um, an Indian burial ground and that the chief is the one who possessed um, Robert DeFeo to murder the family. All of this gets stated in this movie. This is the 11th film in a franchise. I thought for sure they wouldn't they weren't going to bother mentioning it at all or even talking about it, but that is such an established thing in the real scenario of this story. Um this ghost story, real life ghost story. Whether we believe that actually happened or not, that's what the legend states happened and so for the film to really kind of take ownership of that um and to try and continue it in any sort of way is uh, very exciting it's highly respectful to the legend and i found it very engaging um in that way that it was so respectful because i really wasn't anticipating it to be the the I mean, the film establishes that the asylum, well, this girl, she, uh, the main girl, forgive me, I can't even remember her name, and uh, this is only two days later since I've seen this film, um, the, the main girl needs a job, and she accidentally coughs, <sighs> oh, so sorry, she coughs not on the interviewer and she ends up getting the job and she's the only one who actually applied for the job and her friend kind of tells her well don't you know uh, about anything about the asylum and she's like no not really other than um she, she's a uh, like pretty much a janitor there and they said well the guy who bought it demolished the amityville house and built the asylum on those grounds so if you think you're seeing haunted things, which is what she's talking about, you probably are. The, the film gets really interesting near the end when the girl is uh, 
the girl gets restrained. Our lead character, who's... I'm sorry, but she, she truly she should be fired because she violates HIPAA like three or four times in the movie. Um, HIPAA is a privacy protection thing at hospitals. You do not look in people's charts. You just don't do that. And now when I see it in movies, it really freaking bothers me because the there's another guy there who's like, oh, I won't tell anybody. You freaking should. She should get fired. The person that she was looking at, they need to be notified. I don't care if they're not mentally sane. That is not proper for her to go through looking. It's just irksome looking at something like that um, because it really throws me out of the piece because it just shows such a lack of understanding of how hospitals work. Um... Or at least are supposed to work, I should say. A anyways, what happens to her is that uh, the guy who runs the hospital says, you were never an employer here. You have been here since this hospital has opened. And he's saying, um, you've always been a patient here. Now, this was interesting. Had they gone in that direction through the rest of the piece, that could have been really interesting. What they did was something uh, I wasn't too all enamored with, I should say. They established early on that there's a deep, deep part of the, uh, the asylum, which I'm going to call it the Hannibal Lecter hallway, because that's what it is. It's very much trying to be Silence of the Lambs. And to give them some credit, there's some really interesting stories, some really interesting dialogue there. It's no Silence of the Lambs. But what are we expecting it to be, really? The thing with the ending, though, is that she gets locked up and there's one of them is like one of the people in the really, really low, the Hannibal Lecter hallway, is this witch who is a part of, like, a satanic coven that was going to, like, murder six people so that they could have immortality. It's discovered that the guy who built the hotel is a part of the satanic coven as well. <laughs> that witch actually doesn't survive. And then he's telling this girl who's the janitor, is like, you are so important in this whole scheme of things. Now, it's also established that the girl's mother passed away um, from cancer, and she feels guilty that she didn't spend enough time with her. And the witch tells her that you're supposed to um, get out, like, to leave. Um, or else, and she sees people who have passed away, uh, either on in the house, because they actually establish one of Robert DeFeo's um, sisters she sees near the very beginning of the piece. There's another um, patient who dies in the morning, and we don't know that, but she sees her, and she actually speaks with her. Um, and I think she, if I remember correctly, she tells her she's going to die there. So these are interesting things. I thought there might be something with a telekinetic thing with her. That's why she was so special. That's why she was chosen. None of that really comes into play by the end. She's just kind of there to be a sacrifice. And even then, it's just she's just there to have the murders blamed on her. And what he says is that uh, he gets into... Okay, so the guy gets away with it, essentially. The very end of the piece is that... I mean, obviously, there's going to be spoilers in this. I mean, why would you watch a review of this if you haven't already seen the movie? Go out and see the movie. Don't just listen to my opinion on it, but the, the very end of the piece is that she, the girl, she, she has this gun, she's going around and she's going to kill the guy who runs the asylum, but she can't bring herself to do it even though he's been going around killing people. And actually, the, the creepiest thing of the piece was when um, that guy is dressed up in, as the black figure 
this again is not a film established thing this is not in the film narrative of this franchise this is established in the legend surrounding the amityville uh horrors origins especially with the defeo stuff and um so i thought that was that that was a wonderful nod um there's i mean the i haven't even mentioned the greatest character who's the main janitor that guy was awesome there's not much to talk about other than I think he by far was the best actor in the piece, um, the most engaging, and he was a very, very likable character. Um, oh, major props to you, dude. I'm sorry I haven't mentioned you much more other than that. Not that you're watching this review anyways. But the thing with the ending is that she is going to get blamed for all of these murders, and so the police come. She doesn't kill the guy. She gets shot by the police and she dies. And then this guy, a year later, he's being interviewed and he's written this tell-all book about the asylum, says the asylum's still going to get run, and says that in this way, because it's going into, it's going to become a movie, it's already in this best-selling book, they will be immortalized. Which is, it's a weird message for the piece. It, it's like slightly clever but it doesn't fully hold up under its own weight but i've got to tell you for an 11th entry that didn't have much of a budget there is so much passion and respect to the material that i give a lot of passes to it i'm trying to analyze this and look at the positives and the negatives and actually on the whole the positives greatly outweigh the negatives so i give Andrew Jones, I think that was his name. Let me double check for you. Yeah, that's his name, Andrew Jones. I give Andrew Jones like 100% credit for being very, very respectful of the legend, doing something to continue in a franchise that seems like it's never going to die, even though like hardly anyone's watching these pieces. For what it was for its budget for what i was anticipating this was better than i could have imagined it being am i excited about the next entry let me think about that no even though i thought this one was great i have no desire to see the next one i will see it and we'll talk about that one next time see you guys